Mr. Swirl, the internet's most disturbed user. It's on both screens. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Hold on, what channel is this? Nick Crowley. Okay, Nick Crowley. Pattaya, Thailand. Two young brothers enter a local internet cafe, take their seats, and begin playing their favorite games. One boy was 13, and the other just 8. And together, they sat there and played the way they always did, getting lost in their screens, wasting the day away, until one of the boys felt a tap on his shoulder. Standing there beside them was a similarly 8. What the fuck? Is that Dome 64? It looked like it a little bit child, a stranger to the boys, but a friendly one who strikes up a conversation and eventually poses an offer. According to the unnamed child, he had a friend who lived close by that owned a special computer, one far better than the device they were currently using, and one that had any game you could ever dream of playing. And he was headed to that friend's home right now, but he didn't want to go alone. It was an offer that the boys just couldn't refuse, and considering the child was clearly around their age, they saw no red flags and agreed to go with him, following the boy to a nearby apartment building, then up seven flights of stairs and into a dark room. But waiting for them inside that room wasn't some sort of supercharged computer, and it surely wasn't a friend of the boys, and instead, it was a monster in every sense of the word. A depraved soul who, years down the line, would go on to become one of the most notorious predators ever to walk this earth, an entity known only at the time as Mr. Swirl. And these children had just fallen into his trap. <laughs> Who's now at the heart of a global manhunt? The best side hustle to start in 2022 is not by doing e commerce, real estate, or writing blogs that. No hey guys, I just wanted to announce that I am currently working on two collaborative projects with my good friend Nexpo, aka Ryan. Together we made this channel called Nick and Ray. Things have gone completely off the rails, but I can honestly say it's some of the most fun I've ever had creating. I've seen to be evidence of multiple separate instances of abuse, including images of three young boys taken in a dark apartment building. The discovery was horrid, though sadly all in a day's work for investigators who encountered things of this nature on a daily basis, and it's a discovery that likely would have never been discussed by the media after that one day had it not been for one unusual detail. Typically, in cases involving CP, those taking the photographs and performing the actual abuse will almost always go out of their way to ensure that they aren't shown on camera. That way, if authorities should stumble upon it, they would essentially be unidentifiable. However, the dozens of photos found on this particular hard drive were different. Because rather than hiding just out of frame like all the other predators seemed to do, the man behind these images had instead gone out of his way to ensure he was featured within them, shamelessly inserting himself into every single picture, even posing for them before, during, and after he had changed the lives of these kids forever. And although his entire body was shown in these photographs, the only thing hiding his identity was the addition of a single effect, one that swirled the man's face into a distorted, pixelated mess, making him completely unrecognizable, and leaving his face to look like this. There was something so disturbingly arrogant about it, a man posing with his victims while destroying their lives, hiding behind only a single swirl of color. If you ever see a man with a hairy chest, run. Color, almost enough. as if he was taunting any investigators who might eventually find these images. And given the clear indications that this man was obviously a serial abuser, and likely still out there offending, tracking this anonymous figure down became priority one for law enforcement in the area. And it's there that he would be given his nickname, Mr. Swirl. And with the swirl being the only thing standing in the way of investigators getting to see his face, most would have assumed that identifying him would be a walk in the park. However, this was far from the case. 
As the images began to be dissected, it quickly became apparent that deciphering the sensor was going to be far more difficult than initially thought, and potentially even impossible, as the pixels had been scrambled in such a unique way that there wasn't any known method to unscramble it. And quickly, what should have been their most valuable clue, the one that stood so tantalizingly close, became a lost cause, leaving investigators at their first dead end. Realizing that things were about to get much more difficult, the German police enlisted the help of an agency known as Interpol, an international crime-stopping organization with a special unit dedicated to resolving crimes against children. Interpol immediately began to get to work, attempting to decipher the photos in a different way, this time by using context clues in the pictures to track down where exactly they were taken, which in turn could tell them where this man was from and where the abuse was taking place. But this too unearthed yet another problem. The first batch of images was discovered to have come from Cambodia, but the next showed evidence that the man was in Vietnam, and then in Thailand, and potentially even South Korea as well. Rather than gaining clarity, the locations of these images instead made the search even wider, as the man was seemingly traveling from country to country, committing his crimes, and then fleeing, thus never staying long enough for law enforcement to catch up with him, making it completely unclear to investigators where he was actually from. And given just how vast his travels were, at this point, it was realized that Mr. Swirl could be anywhere, a moving target, so to speak, and an active one as well. During the investigation, which would later be dubbed Operation Vico, in reference to Vietnam and Cambodia, which seemed to be the main sites of his abuse, investigators made a disturbing discovery, that Mr. Swirl's photographs were not exclusive to just that hard drive, as photo after photo began to appear on various online forums, with all of them featuring that disturbed, swirling face. The images were shared across the web, seemingly straight from the man himself, and were sent out to various predatory groups that were filled with individuals just as sick as he was. Within these groups, it was considered a badge of honor to show your body and face within the content you made, thus leading to the sender becoming well-respected among his peers, which showed us two things. One, that this was likely the reason why Mr. Swirl inserted himself in these photos, as it had led to him becoming a beloved member of their twisted community, in turn granting him access to all the CP he could want. And two, that the images found on the hard drive did not account for his whole body of work, as in these chat rooms and forums, police would find far more photos featuring their suspect, raising the total from a few dozen to nearly 300. By this point, Mr. Swirl had been untraceable. Authorities were essentially searching for a ghost, and though these new images must have felt like a gut punch at first, they would eventually prove to be integral to their investigation, as for the first time in their hunt, Mr. Swirl had made a key error. Within these postings, Mr. Swirl had forgotten to hide his IP address, in turn revealing the general area in which they had been sent, with the location being Vancouver, Canada. This break revealed the key detail that he had some sort of tie to Vancouver, and that he was likely a sex tourist, someone who travels to countries that have loose laws around their age of consent in order to be able to abuse children without any repercussions. With Mr. Swirl clearly doing the same thing, visiting multiple countries in Asia, making his material, coming home, and then sharing it with his friends. It certainly didn't solve the case, but it was finally a step in the right direction. And unbeknownst to the team working on Operation Vico, they were quickly approaching an even bigger revelation. As authorities were working hard on pinning down Mr. Swirl's location, some members of the team held on hope that the images themselves could still be unscrambled, and upon digging a bit deeper, one member of the team would actually recognize the Swirl as having come from a fairly standard editing program, which revealed something. The Swirl effect wasn't like a typical sensor or blur. Those effects completely mask or even remove the pixels from the actual photograph, making them nearly impossible to decipher. But this effect did neither of those things, and instead, it simply rearranged the pixels of the man's face into a swirling pattern, meaning that this image still contained all of its original pixels, and Mr. Swirl's face was somewhere in this picture. They just had to piece it together. And so, in what must have felt like a Hail Mary at the time, an investigator put one of the images into that very same editing software, then clicked that very same swirl effect, and simply reversed it which in turn led to this. In 
in an investigation that started all the way back. We got him. Andrewski voice. See, look. It's always who you expected. And it's who you least expected. Expect the unexpected. Got his ass. Reverse swirl. <laughs> we got him. Back in 2004, finally, Mr. Swirl's face was revealed with a single click a whole three years later, confirming not only what the man looked like, but also that it was truly just one man behind the swirl. And now, all they had to do was find him. Interpol first started their search by sending this man's image to every single police station the network had access to, asking if anyone across the world had a criminal in their database who might match this photo, but this attempt would fall flat, indicating that whoever this man was, he likely had no prior criminal record. Time was clearly of the essence, and they knew that with every waking moment, Mr. Swirl could be adding to his list of growing victims. And wanting to act fast, Interpol made a fairly unprecedented decision. They reached out to every single major news outlet across the world and asked them to show this man's face on their broadcast to help bring this predator to justice. Additionally, the images of Mr. Swirl's face were also plastered in all corners of the internet. And within just one day, the story was quite literally everywhere. What started as a small search for an anonymous man had become an international manhunt overnight. And within just hours, Mr. Swirl would be anonymous no more. Eve Online on Mac immerses you in a universe with top news story this hour, the worldwide search for a suspected pedophile is concentrated in Thailand this morning. We now know the suspect is a Canadian. The CBC's Michael McAuliffe reports from Bangkok. This morning, Interpol announced they now believe they know who the man is. He's been identified as a Canadian, 32-year-old Christopher Paul Neal. His name is Christopher Paul Neal. Not only did Neil's face and body match perfectly with Mr. Swirl, but he also had grown up just outside of Vancouver where the IP was tracked to. And he had moved from country to country across Asia in recent years, countries like Cambodia, Vietnam, and Thailand. The resemblance was so undeniable that even one of his own family members came forward to help identify him. Christopher Neal was in fact Mr. Swirl, a discovery that came with some disturbing revelations. As it turns out, Christopher Neal was actually working as a children's English teacher, a job he had held in each of the countries he was discovered to have abused young boys in. A little bit early, I was finna say. I don't even have work. You can't trust nobody. You can't just trust the the gym teacher, the school teachers, the cafeteria lady, you, the doctor, the nerd, you can't trust nothing. It's, it's all bad out here. And when you know you can't trust nothing, the best thing you can do is become competent and knowledgeable in the necessary fields. Being, knowing your life skills and being able to go off grid and be able to maintain your household. So if anything was to occur, you can handle it. You're competent and you're capable of figuring this out. Because this is, you just go out on, on, a, on a limb thinking, oh, this ain't going to happen to me. A lot of people think that to their children that go missing every 30 to 40 seconds, more than 800,000 go missing annually, they think the same thing. It's like an unlucky lottery winning it's like, you know how everyone is assigned numbers being your social security? It's like your, your lottery number is called and something tragic happened to you or to somebody in your family. And it could have been avoided. But we look at it like, okay, the millions of other people, they still send their kids to the following and you feel the same way. Like, oh, ain't nothing going until your number is called. The teacher, bro. It get deeper than that. It's law enforcement officers that are going to arrest you because they're just doing their job. That's what they say. And they know they lease who you expected. They going back home when their shift is over with and they going to attend to that little boy in a basement. And they dressing up as the clown, the John Wayne Gay Gacy, a Richard Ramirez, a Jeffrey Dahmer. And they indulge in bestiality, bestiality 
incest, pedophilia, molestation, anything you can think of. This world is really sick and twisted. The other video I reacted to yesterday with the, I forgot her name already, but you can look it on my channel. That story that happened to that little girl, man. And then I'm somehow supposed to believe in this religion. They indoctrinated everyone with enforced and the foundation of it anyway. How they, I don't want to get into all that, but certain things happen to people that's so like innocent and it's not even fair she was a female that got abducted by a guy that in itself she's born like she's forsaken with this vessel this vessel this female this this body and you know how a female is naturally weaker than a male and someone can just impose they will on you i don't like that about life like but yet everybody say everything is perfect and god make no mistakes you would say i'm human right and with the brain capacity I do have access to, I know if I was the God, I'm my own God, but if I was the God, that, sh that kind of shit wouldn't be possible. Take it a step further. She wasn't even over the age of 25. And you got to be over 25 or 25, right, to your brain to be fully developed where you can discern and know which is what. And that's when you really are adult, I guess. Because your brain isn't fully developed to the age of 25, right, so that play into hand and she being forsaken with this vessel this female body and the male naturally stronger so he can impose that his will on her and i didn't have multiple males over there at a point of time and the r word and <sighs> my apologies i didn't mean to get into all that but you will see what i'm talking about if you go to the last video i uploaded yesterday yesterday that's crazy i just think that's crazy about life like and somebody say this is perfect a god make no mistakes you a goddamn lie somebody made a mistake making it likely that he used this position of power to lure in children from his classes to That's eventually sad. abuse them and share their photos online along with this it was also revealed that he had used his relationships with young boys to help lure in other children for him to assault as looking back on the story that started this video he had recruited a clueless child he knew to lure those two brothers back to his apartment this discovery also shined a spotlight on his social media pages and specifically his myspace page where he chillingly wrote loving asia will i ever come back while in the midst of his abuse spree but for me, one of the most shocking revelations was that those images that he had posted during the investigation weren't actually posted to his computer. At some point in the early 2000s, Neil had stopped home for a brief vacation to visit his family, and while there, he decided to upload all of his CP to his internet friends. But rather than using his personal device or a public computer, he instead broke into his own brother's laptop and uploaded his content there. That way, the images would be tracked to his brother and not him, which explained why he never bothered to hide his IP address. The more they learned, the more disturbed the story became, as even at the time they discovered his identity, it was revealed that he had currently been working in South Korea as a teacher. But when the officers arrived to arrest the man, he was already long gone. Having certainly seen his face all over the news, Christopher made the decision to flee the country, being spotted in this image captured at an airport in Thailand, as he had flown to the country likely in an attempt to find refuge. Throughout the following days and weeks, his likeness would turn up time and time again in the country, indicating that he was somewhere in Thailand hiding out, and having cornered him in the region, it wouldn't take long for police to knock on the door of an abandoned house in the middle of nowhere in which Christopher Neal happened to be hiding, bringing the multi-year search for Mr. Squirrel to an end. <laughs> Following his arrest by Thai police, Neil will be charged for his assault on those three young boys from the internet cafe, as it was the only crime they could prove had taken place in their country, and with it carried a prison sentence of five years. Admittedly, the sentencing was light, but the plan was to have Neil turned over to Canadian authorities after he did his time in Thailand, where they would also prosecute him all over again. 
with the hope being that they could do the same thing with countries like Cambodia and Vietnam, and essentially force him to live out his life in prison. However, when the sentence was completed in 2012, and Christopher was deported back to Canada, the shocking decision was made to allow Christopher Neal to walk free. When Neil was detained in Canada, authorities let him walk under the condition that he would never own a device that connected to the internet again, as well as the agreement that he would stay away from parks, schools, and also register as a sex offender. I can't for the life of me understand why this decision was made, but from what I could gather, it seemed to center around the fact that his crimes were international and that none of his other victims had actually come forward, meaning the other countries they had hoped would prosecute never actually bothered to pursue it. And because his crimes didn't happen on Canadian soil, not much could really be done, legally speaking. And so in the end, the hunt for Mr. Swirl ended up lasting almost as long as the sentence he served. And even after everything this man did, he was let loose and allowed to assimilate back into society. But this isn't where our story ends. Not even a full year later in 2013, it would be uncovered that Christopher Neal had somehow managed to purchase a computer, and also connected to the internet, a clear violation of his conditions. And though he claimed it was just for writing a book about his life experiences, when investigators seized the device, they would unsurprisingly find even more CP, 25 images to be exact, including two with his signature swirling face. As it turns out, Christopher had been using the device to contact his fellow pedophile friends, where he would even message one of his disturbed friends right after his release, saying, the swirl liveth still, proving without a shadow of a doubt that he was remorseless about his crimes and took pride in his new nickname. And somehow, the discovery got even worse from there, as it was revealed that a friend of his had shown him how to access the deep web and how to share these photographs in practically an untraceable way, thus allowing him to continue being active in these predatory groups, no matter what restrictions were placed on him. After Canadian police made this discovery, Christopher would yet again be arrested, and this time they had the chance to really send a message and put him away forever, as clearly letting him walk away the first time was a mistake, as he wasn't reformed even in the slightest. And so, to make up for this, the judge would give Christopher Neal the whopping sen- He wasn't reformed. He wasn't reformed. How do you expect someone to reform? I don't even know why I want to take this, but the judge that felt pity for him that let him off early, even though he had to register as a sex offender, I hope y'all know it's judges out there. You think they supposed to uphold this, this thing with the law. It's judges out there that indulge in this kind of activity, but they, who you least expect it, so they get away with it. It's doctors, it's nurses, it's veterinarians, whatever the fuck, veterans, it's a, it's a lot of people that, that get down like this. Bestiality, it, it varies. Necrophilia. Um, you expect him to... What was the word he used again? Hold on. Judge would give Christopher Neal the whopping sentence. And so, to make up for this, the judge would give him was a mistake, as he wasn't reformed even in the... You expect him to reform. Okay. Ask yourselves, is people born irredeemably evil and it's just inherent? <laughs> is they simply a mirror of this construct that doesn't work? Is these fetishes and things he like, pedophilia and all that, is it from his bloodline, his family tree, passed down through your RNA, your ribonucleic acid? from your mother's side and, fa and father's side. And you gotta think their mothers, mothers and fathers, fathers all the way back for 15 generations, however long this species has been on the planet. Nonetheless, or it can vary. It can be a multitude of things. It can be through epigenetic memory, a mirror of this construct, being touched themselves when growing up, or You expect someone to... I 
I feel like all this ties into one, one, um, one another, especially with the epigenetic memory. Like it's a reason why you're born with gifts, talents, or even fears. You may be scared of heights and you don't know why it could be whatever your, your ancestors went through. And we know this for a fact through epigenetic memory. And your genealogy is directly connected to your psychological state. So you know how some people on the planet, they have these animal genetics, like that 98.7 naturally violent chimpanzee and other different animals. That's so why it may be a multitude of things. Nonetheless, it's a lot of people here and it's like they just spawn and they literally have this in them. Some people take it a step further and be like, it's demons, or gens, or archons on them. But I really wonder, what is this shit? I know it's... All of them can play a part. This shit is crazy. It's light is. And so, to make up for this, the judge would give Christopher Neal the whopping sentence of just five and a half years, with time served, meaning that he would only end up in jail for a little over 14 months. The prosecution praised the sentence as a win, and Christopher vowed to change his ways, but it just doesn't sit right that as of 2016, Mr. Swirl, the man responsible for dozens and dozens of instances of extreme child abuse, which by the way are just the ones that we know of, is and what's crazy about it, bro, you know how they say the Bible, it's like some astro, astrology type things in there, as well as biology, metaphorically, and parables. So, I still don't know the verse in the Bible, verbatim whatsoever, but the sentiment is you will suffer of your father's doings. Somebody let me know that chapter and what is the exact words verbatim. But the sentiment is you will suffer from whatever your father did. Example, like what their ancestors did. Through epigenetic memory, it's passed down to your kid. It seeps in his blood. It's in them. Yeah, sometimes your kid can turn out perfectly fine. It can miss him. It can skip him. One of them can have asthma. The other one may not have it. Or may pick up in his child when, when he have one. Nonetheless, it's like you were born and you have these fetishes and desires that sick and twisted for real. But it's literally just you and you lust and yearn for it. And it's from your your forefathers, your ancestors, and what make up of you today currently. So it's like you do suffer of your father's doings. But it, it can be more. It can be that on top of this construct, on top of being touched yourself when you was younger, on top of your genealogy being connected to directly to your psychological state as well as what you ingest we ain't ingesting nothing but poison rather what we eating drinking bathing in through our eyes and ears the frequencies and you know how frequencies interact with water and water holds memory and it's like all this shit ties into one another like this world is the depiction you see before you so it can be all the things i'm speaking of which make up of this entity you see before you but it's like if someone born like that and they suffer of their father's doing, doings and they fetishes and what they truly like and desire go against social norms or whatever's deemed to be normal, it really ain't nobody normal. A lot of these mother that depict they people in a light to where you got their pre, your preconceived notions that they the good guy or whatever. Like, man, a lot of them, it's, it's news channel anchors that get on there reporting, talking they shit. That like this shit too. They get away with it or want to get away with it. You seen the letters Jeffrey Dahmer was receiving. Hey, Jeff, I like you a lot. I know I would like to do the same thing. I just don't know how I would get away with it. Just know we surrounded by a bunch of Mr. Swirls. Before they get their coffee at Starbucks, they have them put the swirl on it. Like, it's sick out here. It's crazy. So I'm like trying to pinpoint, but it can vary. Some can be the things I listed or it can be three of the, of the, the ones I listed. Or it can just be one factor. But if you inherently got these this thing to you that's against everything who was that the blame on like who now how can you fix that or reform that if your genealogy is connected directly to your psychological state or through epigenetic memory which your Is 
a free man, now living a normal life in Vancouver. And worst of all, he now has access to share this material through untraceable avenues, meaning that there is a good chance that he could still be out there obtaining, sharing, and who knows, maybe even producing his content. Just know, there's billions of these on the planet. Females, males, it, don't, it varies. And just know, it's, how many people is on the planet? Just know it's billions of these. And some, it varies, they got rankings. Some A plus players, some S level, some Z level. Meaning some like the torture, some like the, some like to, some will let you free after they get what they want. Some gonna eat you like Jeffrey Dahmer. It varies, but it's billions of these on the planet. I hope you know that. I hope you know that. I hope you know that. This shit really like that. It's a sad truth. Let's continue. The case of Mr. Swirl is such a frustrating one. For once, a case of this nature gained worldwide attention and was pursued by the full extent of the law, with the folks over at Interpol doing a fantastic job with the case, only for it all to be deflated once he was finally captured. And just knowing that he's out there living a normal life. You know the funniest part about this all to me? Knowing what I know. You see, like, the officers that detain him or grab him and put him in wherever they finna put him in jail, prison. The ones that hired these officers, the top superiors, they got this law enforcement thing patented, even the military. They indulge in this. They got unlimited money. They got unlimited power. They can do whatever they want. Example, they so... They feel like they better than you, and a kid is better than yours as well. So if your kid poor and they're as rich and they in a power and position, if they kid born fucked up somehow and they need a kidney, they're gonna get one of your little poor kids a whack, and they're gonna get the organs, whether it's encrypted through the IP on the dark web, deep state, and is will he will receive it for his children. There's no life really like that. It's some of y'all that's so called normal. Try to look at it. Really look at it. You're back against the wall. You in a position of power and money. Would you do that? Your kid need this. And ain't none on the market right now. So would you get someone else kid whack for you to get? Just know it's sick like that out here. It's really like that here on earth. I hope you know that. It's no conspiratorial things, bro. That term in itself was created by the CIA to gaslighting you when it comes to speaking up on real topics. You get a gut feeling. You ever get a gut feeling? Well, minuscule things in comparison to what's going on a large grand scale of things but and then you you always write with your gut feeling it's the same thing you just not discerning you ignoring it you think oh they can't do that how can't they to steggy experiments ain't do nothing but issuing out an apology the um black wall street massacre anybody with common sense in the brain and righteousness and close ethics morals and virtue Okay, how do you square this? First, you got to get the people. You ain't going to get them, though, because they don't investigate themselves. Secondly, you will build that Black Wall Street right back up and give them their money and extra for the one, the lives lost. They haven't fucking done that. And yet y'all still got faith in the system. May y'all get uninstalled. May you go back to the loading screen with no materials indefinitely where your purpose will consist of nothing more but opening and shutting cabinets. Because y'all fucking it up for everybody. The niggas that play Agent Smiths, it's like you the prisoner as well as the prison guard. You in prison too. You in hell in the barium, aluminum, chemtrails, fluoride, sodium, fluoride, deodorant. Your pants attacking you to die that seep through your largest organ on your body being your skin. So it's like you a prisoner just like us and you the prison guard. You picked up the extra ship for little to no money that you still got to give to them. Pan, only species on the planet paying Rent to people that don't have a biological identification to the planet. They got the lowest fertility rates. They dying because they're unnatural. <sighs> Being psychologically evaluated by them when a whole history up to their current present ain't never been psychologically right themselves. They even commit that kind of history and heinous acts they did, let alone the dark ages of eating their own people. And yet, these are the same people you let psychologically evaluate you. Raggy? Like, what the fuck? Life fucked up. This shit isn't perfect. Y'all talking about God, make no mistakes. That bitch ass niggas made hella mistakes. And me as a so called human, I can fix it. For example, man, I can. What's the video? One second. I'm finna find it. 
We're going to do this the hood way, the good way. The Junko Furuta case. It's crazy. I think she was like, what, 17, 19 or something? For that to happen to her, for her to be robbed for her innocence, for her to be in there elongated, prolonged, like, what, 44 days of torture, being raped by multiple different men, forced to play with herself, dropping dumbbells on her hands, or her hands, useless setting her legs on fire, putting, pouring candle wax on her eyelid, like, for her to go through that shit on the... And it'll be some sick, twisted-ass religious pedophile that'd be like karma retribution. You don't know what she did in her past life. That killed the whole purpose if you delete the installation of what happened in their past life, the wrongdoings they committed, and then you want them to... How you make them feel it is they know what they did, then they're being punished. So that canceled that out. But for that to happen, she just born... She forsaken with this weaker vessel of a female's body going against a male and then it's multiple of them that's just doing whatever they impose and they they will on her that's fucked up i don't get that bro like that's really like life like and then some say oh she went through what she went through more than what jesus went through yet you telling me jesus died for my sins fuck you and jesus and god i'm my own god i'll never give my power to no external source at all see i got this far on my own accord going in with thyself it's crazy you can be the best bro you can be the best person you can be bro you can really be and some shit like this can happen to you bro god ain't coming to save you jesus he ain't gonna at least just let you just die and have an instant death or something but at least like you can't overcome it like that shit me reacting to that video, bro, that shit changed my perspective about a lot of shit, like, in life, like, that shit literally changed my life, like, me watching that video, like, and I already knew a lot, but still, though, like, yet they do say you project your reality, right, but it's crazy to me, though, like, with the capacity and the neurons I do have and synapses that snap and they're sparking off right. I can think of ways to actually make life better easily. And God, the ultimate creator, what have you, you believe in, couldn't correct this era that's an old ass update that should have been updated. Like people can't defend themselves, bro. I, li I fucking hate that about life. I really do. <sighs> that shit put a rage in me like no other. <laughs> I really hate that about life, dog. You can be innocent, you can be righteous, you can be good, you can and yet it just take a group of people on the same accord to be the bad guys or what have you, and they can come and impose their will on you. Experiment on you, bring the Judas cradle out, the brazen bull, blood eagle, they can like and God bitch ass ain't doing nothing about it. I got a problem with that. Especially if he's sitting down in a chair like me and he's a physical entity. It's nothing you can tell me about no shit like that. That case, bro. That Junko Furuta case, bro. Are you... <sighs> I'm done with this video, man. This reporting on this video was, it was good. So. Shout out Nick Crowley. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like the video. If you like the video, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, DM me the link via X. Formerly known as Twitter, let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick and Rumble. I'll see you on the next video, man. I'm out.